Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we have the honor and the privilege of having Judy from Judy's Homegrown teach us her methods on planting both of our favorite um, vegetables, if you can call it a vegetable or a fruit. But if it is a fruit, I don't want any of these in my fruit salad. Um, but we're going to be planting these tomatoes here in my garden doing Judy's Techniques, who is one of the experts at planting tomatoes um, in gardens throughout Los Angeles. So I just want to quickly share that I picked up these plants from the local nursery. Um, I'm hoping, I don't know if the viewers can see this, but this plant over here I picked up for a little more than $6. It's a gallon sized tomato plant. Um, and Judy, I'm hoping I can get your feedback on this. Is it, Should I be spending $6 or more? There's even larger sized tomato plants at the nursery. $4 for this four inch tomato plant. For $4 I got also six tomato plants in the six pack, um, which is personally my b favorite way to go. Or for $2, I've got two of my favorite tomatoes over here. Um, I've got the seeds for about two bucks and I can now plant maybe 50 tomato plants if I go, if I go at it this way. Um, what is your opinion in regards to how much money should I be spending in order to even get started with planting my tomatoes? Okay, so it depends on your budget, but I'm really cheap. So I Me just too. start things from seed, and I feel I have more control over the varieties. I mean, you can't get certain varieties. Like, you could never find a Clint Eastwood Rowdy Red at the store. Um, the other thing is that they have, the varieties they have at the store, some of them I really just don't like. Um, Early Girl is very popular. I don't know why, because it's a very bad tasting tomato, in my opinion. But I'm sure there's somebody out there who's going to argue with me on that. Um, the reason the early girl is, is so popular, I guess, is because it, it can handle cool temps. But you trade off. If it's a cool temp uh, tomato, it's not going to taste as good as the warmer temp regular season tomatoes. Um, the other thing is, like, why would you buy a big potted tomato? Well, you want to kind of get a jump on things. So maybe you are starting late in the season and you want the plant to already be about a month or two old. Or actually. This plant's probably more like three months old. Okay, so yeah, you are gonna get a jump on it, and you're paying a premium, not just for the, the time that it's sat in the nursery getting older, but for the pot size and the, the planting mix. So I understand why they charge the extra. Um, I, I can't lie, this is gonna be a uh, performer faster than those other plants, but those other plants are gonna, they're going, and once they're in the ground, they're going to start really taking off as opposed to being in a pot this long. And there's reasons why I would never buy a three year old tree, but that's a whole other conversation. Okay. In a pot. In a, in pot. a pot. So the goal, again, is um, for maximum flavors to get a warmer temp variety, tomato plant are typically better tasting than the cooler varieties right. such as the early girl right and I'll admit I've always had an early girl in my garden and you're holding one I think right now um, just because I wanted it in my garden again so but I didn't realize I was compromising flavor by going with a cooler temp um, tomato variety right and so I, I uh, eat tomato and lettuce sandwiches George I mean um, Charles not so much so he doesn't eat tomatoes right out of the um, right right out of your hand right you're right but if you do, then you're gonna want um, varieties that maybe taste better, or in the case of my garden, I planted whatever variety I wanted for the first seven years, and then I started getting wilt, and the wilt was like decimating my crop. So instead of buying, uh, instead of not planting in those areas, what I did was I bought varieties that can handle wilt, and my favorite now is big beef. Like that is oh, wow. hands down my favorite. It can handle the, the wilt, and the other one I like is Abe Lincoln. It's kind of a medium-sized tomato as well. Those, the, you know, you like those medium-sized tomatoes, That's those are great ones, as opposed to like Carmelo, which is a wonderful tomato, but it won't be able to handle the wilt as well. I've seen Carmelo before. So the other one you, you mentioned was Abe Lincoln? Abe Lincoln and Big Beef. And Big, Big Beef, Beef. Is, okay. is now, you can find that readily available at the, at the uh, big box stores and nurseries. Sounds great. There's one more thing I want to share. So I noticed on the um, early grow variety, on the back side of the sticker, it said indeterminate 
Whereas on this variety of tomato, which is called a patio tomato, it reads on the backside that its habit is determinant. Can you quickly explain what the difference is between indeterminate versus a determinate variety tomato? Sure, so determinant has one determined flush of fruit and then it's done. So it'll, it'll uh, kick in all at once and then once you've taken all the tomatoes off, within about a three week period, maybe four weeks, you can stretch it out. Whereas the indeterminate, they uh, keep producing, and they, they actually sucker a lot, and especially the, um, the smaller the tomato, it seems, the, the more it suckers. And the problem is you have to stake them. You have to kind of tie them, or they will like fall all over the ground and maybe uh, languish a little bit. Whereas if you put them up, you uh, protect them from all that rotting and little animals getting to it and stuff like that. But the good thing about indeterminate is that it just keeps pumping out tomatoes. And you can get an indeterminate sometimes to produce not only in through the regular season, but into the winter. That's and great. especially like my favorite indeterminates are uh, sun gold cherry tomatoes. Um, and then, you know, as you get more into the potato leaf ones, which are the uh, brandy wine. Uh, those those are they're going to also be determinate so uh, you'll get one flush of fruit I, I really like persimmon tomatoes those are mm. some of my favorite and big rainbow is another wow so uh, many varieties yeah there's so there's what hundreds and hundreds of varieties of tomatoes so so just to quickly recap the indeterminate variety will continuously grow even as you said all the way into winter producing fruit pretty much throughout all of those different seasons. Right. Whereas right. the determinant variety is going to grow to a determinant height and produce most of its fruit all at about the same time. Right. And then die or will it create another crop or it's pretty much done, right? It's done. So, yeah, I think so. So you're, you're going to see it start to languish and maybe um, get kind of ratty looking like the old <laughs> tomato plants do. I got it. Great. Well, let's get on to planting tomatoes. Let's get started. So we're going to talk about tomatoes and how to take the suckers, how to identify the suckers and take them off. And I'm only wearing gloves because I'm allergic to touching tomatoes. So um, the most important suckers to take off are the ones that are closest to the bottom. So if you get in a little close on this, you can see this one definitely has a sucker right at the bottom. This is draining off of the um, main plant and we just want to pull it off. Okay, did you see that? And then every time there's a leaf petiole, there's also a little uh, sucker above it, usually. I wouldn't say every time. But a lot of some um, plants sucker more than others, especially celebrity. That variety will have a ton of suckers, and sometimes with celebrity you won't get any fruit, and you'll be like, "Why is my tomato plant not fruiting?" So, oh, I also want to show you these little nodules at the bottom. Do you see the nodules on the base of this plant? Those are little uh, latent uh, roots, and they just want to pop out, don't they? And as soon as we put this underground and we, we uh, plant it pro appropriately, this stem is going to burst out with a whole bunch of uh, roots. Okay, so I like to take off every sucker until you get to a fruiting um, cluster. And unfortunately, I don't have a fruiting cluster on this yet, so I'm just going to take all of these suckers off. Okay, at every... If it has a leaf on it, it's not a fruiting cluster. So you don't have to worry if you take it off that you're taking it off of fruiting cluster. All right. And then it actually has some leaf action here. It's going to, those are eventually going to be taken off. So I take off all until the first fruiting cluster. And then after the first fruiting cluster, I wait for one nice beefy sucker and I allow it to branch into the, the main branch and that first sucker. Can you share where that first so, flower is? Do you see it? So, yeah, actually, this is a yeah. flower. This is a fruiting cluster. Yeah. Just wanted you to point it out. It doesn't look like fruit yet, but it's a flowering. I noticed that and flower. It, and then you're going to, so this is, what I want to make is, this is a critical a distinction. This is the leader. This is, uh, in tree language anyway, this is the leader because it has the fruiting cluster on it. 
and as opposed to you know the one that's going to come out from the that's going to branch out from in between the leaf petiole and the main leader that's going to be a sucker now sometimes that sucker that comes off of there is nice and beefy and so we want to leave it on even though it's below the first fruiting cluster but you have to decide you are the ultimate <laughs> You have to make the ultimate choice of which ones to leave on. Now it's really important to plant tomatoes deep enough because that's what encourages more root growth. Every part of the stem could produce roots if it's below ground. Um, but these leaves are in the way. And actually if you take leaves off, it signals to the plant, let's put all of our energy into producing roots. So. I'm going to plant this soon, today. I'm going to take off all these leaves, not with my fingers because I, I don't want to, if they're thick, I don't want to pinch them. I just want to cut them off. All right, so I'm going to take them all away, take them all off, and we're going to plant it all the way up here. So just the top s spiral of leaves is left. I know it looks severe, but this is all going to be underground. <laughs> All right, this plant's ready to plant. What I'm trying to do is get deep enough so that this plant is underground all the way from... It's got to be as deep from here to here. That's like, what, a foot and a half? So... So I'm going to do... I'm going to mend the soil. And to do that, I don't pour it into the hole. In fact, I pour it on the dirt that I just uh, uh, removed from the hole. And then by pouring it onto that, I'm actually going to be mixing it as I add it back into the hole. Now my I'm just going to add. So you're basically taking the amend soil you're basically adding like a compost mix if you've got your own homemade stuff you can use that incorporating it into the native soil and you're just pretty much mixing the two together only because this is so clay look at that stuff it's, yeah very sticky it's not it's there's no aeration right yeah and uh soil needs to be friable look at that right so i don't i don't think you've been amending your soil enough and there he said 50-50, I think you should, until you get this broke, all broken up. Yeah, nothing's so, been in the soil since about August or September. You haven't added anything. Nothing's but, been added, nothing's been growing. Okay. I, I label everything in my garden because I've got so many plants, but anyway. Okay, so ideally you want to do this uh, in the evening or in the shade or under some um, fog, cover of fog, because having that moisture in the air is great and it'll pr reduce the amount of evaporation of the roots, but it's not as critical on a tomato as on some of your like greens or a um, winter crop. If you have a hot day and you're transplanting a, a delicate uh, crop, you're gonna possibly dry it out and put it into more shock than that's necessary. Boy, when I transplant on days that are overcast, the plants are just loving it. <laughs> They're like, yes, mommy, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> I guess, yeah, my plants are all like my children. Can't help it. <laughs> and I, I want this close enough to the pole so that I can then train it up the pole as we start as it starts getting taller so oh and the other thing I want to plant next to it is a, a basil plant so this is the time we start putting in the basil all right um, so, so I'm gonna do my companion plant of some uh, basil next to this tomato but I don't want this to suffer from uh, kind of the shock of me teasing the, the roots away from the other plants that I'm waiting to use. So I'm going to put a little bit of water into this, into this um, saucer. 
and let it soak up the water as I'm working with the plant that I do take off. And also the other thing you can do is put it in the shade because having it in the sun, even though it's a sun loving plant, while you're going through the transplant stuff, you might want to find a shady spot for it. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to take it over here. It's this little um, rabbit. And then I'm going to tease these, this away with just, <clears throat> you know, a, a fork or a, um, some kind of thing like this. And do you just want me to take one or can I take two? Whatever you'd like. Okay, so I'm going to take these two. They seem to be happy together. Put it right next to the tomato so that they can intertwine their, their um, root systems. So this is going to send out roots to the basil and vice versa. I'm going to put some of this more uh, amendment close to the top rather than the clay right up to the top. And how about mulching? Are we going to mulch these tomatoes? Oh yeah. Definitely want to mulch. Um, right away. Put the mulch under it. And in this garden, I can tell you use a lot of um, bark mulch, just chips, but you could use compost. I use compost generally on my um, garden as mulch. And I, I buy it or I get it from the city, the city mulch. Take a look. That's beautiful. Um, one of the questions that comes to mind is the distance. And I understand you said you put the basil pretty close to the tomato plant, but what's going to happen when I get a giant tomato plant and just a medium sized basil plant? Like how, how is that um, relationship going to work out? So if you really want to be um, favoring the, the basil plant, you should put it on the south side of the tomato because the tomato is going to get bigger than the basil. Uh, if it's as old as this one is. This is a pretty nice sized basil plant though. Um, so I guess, well this this is south. Yeah, you got full sun, full yeah, sun in this area. You, you don't have to worry about it so much because you're going, your sun is going east to west. And by yeah. the way, if you're running beds, run your beds east to west. That's ideal. That's great. Okay, yeah. so now we're mulching it. With a fine layer of, well, it doesn't have to be fine layer, but this is already pretty deep and I don't want to bury it. <laughs> so what's much, the benefits of mulching? Why are we mulching? Oh, this conserves water. It, um, it gives the plant protection. Uh, it feeds the soil. Actually, that's a big one. It actually is feeding the soil with um, some, some things be better than others. That's why I mulch with compost because it's got all the micronutrients and bacteria and fungi in it. But this keeps the leaves uh, away from the soil um, diseases and stuff. So that's another reason why mulching is good. But mostly conserves water and that's really important in Southern California because we, we don't have enough water here. Speaking of water, let's water this in. And then we're going to do a little protective layer uh, using IV Organics because this plant is likely to go through some uh, shock and this will prevent that overly um, like sun drenched wilting from happening. So it'll at least protect against um, too much sun damage during the time that it's trying to bounce back from this transplant. OK, 
okay. <laughs> so thank you so very much, Judy from judyshomegrown.com. I'm gonna put her contact information um, down below this video as well as in the comments. Um, if there are any gardens in the Los Angeles area specifically, tell us where. Uh, from the South Bay all the way up to Malibu. <laughs> uh, so Judy would be your expert. She visits homes. She helps gardens. She does um, not just planting vegetables, but her specialty is, I know trees. You want to share with us what trees? Uh, fruit tree pruning of any kind, uh, whether it's stone fruits, palm fruits, which is apples, pears, pomegranates, uh, avocados. So pretty much anything that grows fruit, food. That's awesome. And then I also do vineyards and roses. So, so much value and we're so lucky to have you and thank you so very much for visiting my garden and thank you so very much for planting my first tomato plant of the season um, and looking forward to making this our best growing season ever and thank you for being a part of it. If you've enjoyed this educational moment by Ivory Organics, be sure to like it and most importantly by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.